The final stage in linking our NDVI image to the vegetation density is to correctly parameterize the image or basically decide exactly where the boundaries are for where the equation works that we've input. So if you have a look on the left hand side here I've got the basic NDVI image and if I look at the, the values of the image we're looking at pixel values of anywhere between minus one and plus one depending on where we are. So out in the water it's often below zero and and the densest vegetation areas are going to be the, the higher pixel values there. Now what I've done is I've already converted this image to a vegetation density image using band math and the trend line equation that I extracted from Excel. So that's what I've got now on the right hand side. Now if I link my two displays you'll be able to see the difference in pixel values. So as I wave my cursor over anywhere in the image you'll see that the the NDVI image from, from the left hand side which is actually display number two has just has values between minus one and plus one and the, the image on the right which is display number one should have values anywhere between zero and one hundred. However because of the way the equation works it will actually work outside those bounds and that's what we need to do in the step here is to take any value of a pixel which is greater than 100 and reset it to 100 because obviously you can't have more than 100% vegetation and anything that's less than zero will reset that value to zero because obviously you don't have anything less than 0% vegetation either. So we'll have a look at particular areas. So as I move my cursor around, the particularly bright areas might be anywhere up to say about 170%, which is incorrect. Okay, so what we're going to do here is to find those areas, first of all, that have pixel values less than zero, and we'll reset those to zero. And the way we do that is through the masking tool. So if we go up to basic tools, masking, and build mask, what I want to do is to build a mask based on my vegetation density image. So I actually might just close the NDVI image to avoid confusion. So basic tools, build mask, and I'm going to build it based on my display number one, which is my vegetation density image, and click OK. Now what I'm going to do here is find those areas where the pixel value is less than zero. So I want to go to Options and Import a Band Data Range. And it's asking me what image I want to be able to extract that data range from. And this is my Vegetation Density image. And click OK. Now the data minimum value I want is zero. And I'll click OK for that. Now then all I need to do is to enter an output file name which I'm going to call a vegetation density minimum file and that will bring up my mask file. I'll just cancel that as I've already created that and I'll open it in a new viewer. So just in the new display group that I've brought up here you'll see the mask file that's created. So this is essentially showing any areas that are less than zero and greater than zero. So it's, it's a binary file, so a pixel value will be either zero or one, depending on if it meets the criteria. So let's have a look at the pixel values of those. So the, the white pixels are one and the black pixels are zero. The next step here is to actually apply this mask to our image. So we go to basic tools, masking and apply mask, and we're going to apply to the vegetation density file we select the mask band which is the mask that we just created called vegetation density minimum and OK. Then we'll click OK and it asks us what value we'd, li we'd like for that mask and we're going to put in zero. So this means that any area that has already been highlighted by that mask we will now give the new value a zero. So values that were less than zero become zero. And we choose an output file name which is going to be the TM Darwin 140610 vegetation density minimum file. And I'll cancel that as, as I've already created it and show you the output here. So we've got our vegetation density minimum file created. And you'll see that there's a bit of difference 
between this image and the image that it was created from. Okay, the main difference is it's a lot tidier. So whereas in this the right hand scroll, you'll see that there's a lot of grey in the in the water areas. And if we link up our displays and get our cursor value, you'll now see that areas that did used to have a negative pixel value have been reset to zero. So this is primarily affecting water body areas. Okay, and as I, as I move around the image, you'll see that those those values have been cleared up. So we now have a range of between 0% and anywhere somewhere up above 100%. So we need to fix up the top end of the equation there as well. So the next step is to create a mask in a similar way, but this time using maximum values of our of our first image, of our image that we've just created here. So again, we go to basic tools, masking and build mask. We're building that based on, on the newly created image that has just been masked for the first time, which is display number two. And this time we're going to import a band data range based on our vegetation density minimum file, which is the one that we just created. And what we want to do is change this maximum value to 100. Okay, so this is going to find us pixels that are above 100 or below 100. And again, create that binary file there. Click OK. And we'll choose our output file name there as veg density max. Okay. So I'll just cancel out of that and open up the file that's been created there. So we've got the mask file our vegetation density max mask and I'll load that to a new band new display so again we've got a binary file of values of either 0 or 1 okay so I can look at those pixel values as I move around and we've highlighted areas that fall outside that range of of 100 so either above or below 100 now the final step here is just to apply that mask so again, I go to Basic Tools, Masking, and Apply Mask. I'm going to apply that to my Vegetation Density Minimum file. I select my mask band, which is my Vegetation Density Max, and OK. OK for that. And this time, I want that mask value to, e to be equal to 100. OK, so that's going to set any pixel value that's currently above 100% back to 100. My final output file will then be TM Darwin um, 140610 vegetation density final so cancel that one as I'll show you the one that's already been created okay so this is our very final vegetation density image I'm going to look at my cursor values and anywhere in the image, I should only be able to get a value of between 0 and 100%. And if you're unsure about that, you can always create statistics of the file under Basic Tools option. And to, a good way to analyze this image is then to open the original Landsat image and understand exactly how the original colors of the image go into relating to the vegetation density. And that will help you analyze different patterns as you go through. But you should definitely make sure that your value is always between 0 and 100%. And you want to make sure that the image appears as you would expect it to based on, based on what you know about the, the images that have gone in to make this, including the, the NDVI image, the original Landsat data, and the Worldview 2 data from which the equation was originally derived.